We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flows it like they crossing in the freaks are coming out. EW Unrestricted, Aubrey and Will Washington. We are here today. We are talking. It's Thursday morning. We've got new episodes every week and I'm excited. I love sitting around. I love talking about all the cool things that happen at EW, all the things that happen on TV, off TV, on ROH and all those sort of things. And I love when media kind of transcends and we get to see little bits of one genre pop into another genre. And I was curious, Will, uh, do you have a favorite rom-com? I don't know. Do you consider like the best man is considered a rom-com or not? But it is certainly romantic and a comedy, but also not. But that's probably my answer. So here's here's my answer, because I think it's it's a little bit of an untraditional rom-com. Mm-hmm. I love the movie Superbad. <laughs> uh-huh. And I watched it recently and it doesn't hold up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, it's one of those like, I feel like I've grown up a little bit and I've matured and I'm like, oh, I thought this was good at one point. <laughs> But I think it's a rom-com because it's both a bromance. We get to see like all of these characters kind of like combine together in like the goal of going to this awesome party, but also their desire to, you know, meet up with chicks and all this sort of stuff. And I love it because there's (laughs) this one particular moment in the movie where at the end they're talking about like Fogel and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And you just see Michael Sarah's character drilling holes in wood Mm -hmm. and the amount of times that i get frustrated with something and i just send that youtube clip of what are you doing just two weeks left just drilling holes fuck it (laughs) (laughs) it's my absolute favorite yeah i I guess that kind of counts yeah i i I would say uh on my end best man is 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 the best answer i can go with specifically because it ended up making a, a really good sequel and i quote it a lot but I can see why you asked that question because yes. there's a lot going on today. Today, we are joined by two of my absolute favorite people. We have Taya Valkyrie and Johnny TV here to talk about their brand new show, Johnny Loves Taya. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you guys? Oh, man. I'm so stoked. <laughs> <laughs> so so the show's been out a little bit now. Uh, I think we've got like three episodes, four episodes out now. What has the response been like? seeing everyone kind of see a peek into your lives. It's been really positive. And I think that people are always just surprised by how much weird things we do outside of just just wrestling and how layered we are as people and entertainers and creators. It's been really cool. And we've worked really, really hard on this project. It's definitely something we've been working on for months. So to have it finally come to fruition is awesome. I've been talking about for years. Yeah. So... It's great. <laughs> What's interesting is that because this is scripted, sometimes it feels like it does a better job of capturing the feeling and the awkwardness and the weirdness that we go through <laughs> than if it wasn't scripted. Stuff that just happens, sometimes it just happens and you can't recreate it. But if it's scripted, then we're taking a moment, like everything's based on a story. Like every episode is based on something that's really happened to us. Yeah. We've just turned it around tenfold and amplified it. <laughs> yeah. So dog birthday parties are a normal thing for you guys. Oh my it's God. just a matter of <laughs> we're going to have a full camera crew there for once. We have pictures from Presley's birthday. For like the last seven years. And yeah. it's always a shark party. There's always onesies and sharks. And it's escalated. It's escalated. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have been really talking about this for a very, very long time. You know, I, I, I could almost see how how enthusiastic you guys were to do this. So I, I wanted to ask you first off about the the posters and everything that were uh, going into the promotional side of things. Yes. You guys are doing the takes on famous rom-coms. You did the Pretty Woman poster, all of those. I, I guess what was the inspiration behind deciding to do it that way as far as promoting the show? First of all, I've got to say, that was Taya's idea. That was me. And it was really smart. <laughs> and yeah. And we, just, we did it really fast. Yeah. Like we wanted to promote it differently. We didn't want to just put out like regular wrestling promo pics or a regular photo shoot. And I wanted people to kind of understand what it was right off the bat. Just like wrestling. I feel people have to like, you walk through the curtain, you want people to know exactly what you're doing, right? Or who you are, or identify with you or whatever it is. And so just like this, I wanted the poster and the promotion to do the same thing. So people be like, oh, I get it without even knowing really anything. You know, I picked out a couple of movies and we literally created, you know, recreated the photos, bought the outfits, did it, 
had some friends edit it. By the way, guys in rom coms just wear dark suits. <laughs> like when we did that shoot day, I had a dark suit on with different ties. <laughs> she had like five wardrobe changes. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun. And we actually are now thinking about like different ones that we want to do to promote the show even further. So um, it was fun. It was different and cool. <laughs> so, John, you mentioned a little bit about how like the show is scripted, but it's kind of like actually your own life a little bit. So is there anything that was captured that people would not understand about you guys had you not released the show? If you've never been to one of Presley's birthday parties, <laughs> the short party that we threw for the show was nothing compared to like was like twenty percent of what we usually do for Presley's birthday. So we got to see the toned back version. Oh my! God. Like there are so many, I, yeah, I, so many dogs dressed like sharks. yeah, and I feel like this. <laughs> I feel like the show really shows everybody the dynamic between John and I and like how we work together and how I'm generally like the straight shooter and John is the one who's the wild card. This one loves. <laughs> yeah. And I'm always like reeling him and being like, but space camp. No, you know, like <laughs> space camp. I was dying. <laughs> the podcast starts at nine, John. We have to be ready Get at nine. <laughs> yeah. So people are just getting to know us, I think, in our dynamic outside of what you guys see on AEW TV. Dude, I mean, the first thing that you want to do is establish who you are personally, who you are publicly, and how similar or different those two characters are, and then figure out what people want from you. Yeah. And this process has been helping us do that. Well, it's been a uh, really interestingly time too, because uh, it's almost perfect timing. Because I think as people have gotten to really know you guys as a couple more and more on Ring of Honor TV, and you guys have gotten to do uh, kind of a lot more of the Johnny and Ty stuff, and then the show drops on Valentine's Day, and then it, I think it's just giving people a really good look at more of what we wanted to see from the two of you, and. It's been really interesting watching you guys in Ring of Honor. I think that Johnny especially has really gotten to uh, the the exits have been just honestly my favorite thing oh on earth. Oh boy! Yeah, maybe his favorite thing, except for one person, me. <laughs> <laughs> really? I have never been a fan of the split she hated it. thing. Like, I, he did it before, and I was like, oh, my God, John. John, why did you go get your shoe modified? <laughs> you made a shoe ring to do the split. I, I remember being backstage for that, and, like, you were walking around, and you had these strings tied to your shoes. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be amazing. It's a very complicated rig, and then you have to find, like, some talent that's nice enough to just sit around for six hours holding strings to your shoes. <laughs> and I'm heavy enough that one or two guys aren't enough. No. I we think how many guys did we have three. that day? Like three or four? Three, yeah. three big guys and like buses are leaving and like the whole time <laughs> I have to be like, guys, got We're gonna do guys. it, we're gonna film it, we're gonna we're film it. We're gonna honor, we're last, and you just gotta stay for another hour so you can <laughs> Pull, pull my, my shoe down the hall. <laughs> 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 no, but it makes for an absolutely perfect visual. It's it's one of those things where you can have the vision in your head and you can have the concept down, but until you actually see it executed, you never know how it's going to turn out. But what made you so certain that this was going to be as awesome as it turned out to be? Was, was there certainty? So, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> A whole lot of hope. Certainty sometimes make things more interesting. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Flying too, too close to the sun. That's it's how I roll. <laughs> I've tried it once on concrete, like really kind of porous stone. Oh, no. That didn't work so well. (laughs) Like, I would say that I moved, but I only went like slowly, like five or 10 feet, and it completely ate through my jeans, which is funny in its own right, because it was just kind of like a awkward. (laughs) Very dramatic exit. Yeah. But that day. loud. But that day. The hallway was, was smooth. I and was yelling at the guys who behind the curtain to pull faster. It's a common theme. <laughs> pull you. <laughs> one take of this. You pull as hard as you can. I don't want to fly into that curtain. And so I'm going like eventually so fast that I start to get nervous. Like, am I going to like pick out Taya's knees? Then, <laughs> the curtain I can't see behind me. 
Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty going yeah. on here. <laughs> so, so one of my favorite things, I mean, we're, we're talking about like the fun you guys are having, but this is actually the first time you guys have been on TV together in years. Yeah. How fun is that to be paired together on AEW and on ROH? Yeah, like, I mean, it was 2019 when John left when I was still at Impact. And it really had it. We hadn't been on really TV consistently together since then. We had done a few episodes of MLW in the midst of all that, but like nothing how we're doing now. So it's really been like we both had to kind of get used to each other again and like how our dynamic is on it's camera by the ring, everything. Bit. And like we've both changed as performers as well and grown. And uh, I'm a lot different. I'm like, I'm a totally different person than I was in 2019. And so is John. So it's been really cool to rediscover like our dynamic as performers and as a couple too, like how we deal with ideas and playing off each other. We got married originally on Lucha Underground before we actually got married. Yeah. So it's been a long time. Started from there to impact to MLW to here to triple A. We've had a long, like, different versions of ourselves <laughs> but yeah and no it's I been fun think right now we're the best versions of ourselves as performers as people too yeah definitely enjoying it the most yeah the the theme song of johnny loves taya <laughs> you first showed me this taya i want to say it was like september yeah it was like september october because yeah i am very meticulous about wanting everything perfect mm-hmm. when it's actually seen by people so oh you mean you're a wrestler <laughs> yeah yeah and you know i'm pretending i didn't know that because it was denver yeah. it was literally here in denver it was the the night before the denver show and that would have been september 26th oh my god yeah yeah like we've been just perfecting and i've been putting planting the seeds like waiting preparing my garden of johnny loves Taya for when it finally got to be seen hence all those posters that hence were ready the, yeah everything like right right i time. was just yeah. all all over it so when we got the jingle made basically i wanted it to seem like reminiscent of like the 90s and 2000s like reality shows oh yeah um sick right so that when we made that we had the jingle made i wanted it to be like the nanny jingle that okay (laughs) that was actually that i hadn't even thought of that but now that you say that that's Perfectly accurate. Yeah. And that's where the idea for the cartoon came because I wanted it to be like the nanny. There's the Anna Nicole Smith show. That's what I thought was Anna Nicole. The, was girls, it? the girls next door when they have the bobbleheads. Yes. That's why our heads move. Like yeah. everything. I overthought everything, guys. <laughs> no, but you can't overthink stuff like that. You just I mean, got to. Like if you have it in your head, you just have to figure out a way to get it on the screen. The lady that wrote the jingle did a fantastic job. Pete Bregman did the animation. You know, electric sleep, electric sleep images did the posters for us. His name's Justin as well. You know, everybody worked really hard to like make this weird, crazy thing that I had in my head and John's head come true. It was really impressive how many people came together. I think it was partly because the jingle was so good that the posters realized, well, we got to be good. Yeah. And then (laughs) Pete doing the animation. Pete's always good too, but like, He's like, well, this project seems really well done. It's going to require a lot of really good work. Yeah. And so everybody came together and was on the same page. Well, nothing popped me harder than the Christmas Loves Mariah line, obviously. Yes. I know. Uh, but- <laughs> as soon as I heard Christmas Loves Christmas Mariah, loves Mariah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think of words that rhyme with Taya. Mariah. <laughs> Go figure. Which, uh, but it's great. Uh, I think that it's catchy. It's uh, it's charming, and it has exactly that vibe you were going for. I, like I said, I hadn't even thought of Nanny. I had thought of Anna Nicole, and so uh, because she had that reality show that kind of fit that time period that you're going for, and so like I, I think everything. And yeah, and like, think of like Ice Loves Coco. Yeah, all yeah. these weird things that I've like and John and I have watched over the years, just mm-hmm. kind of like. <laughs> Are this show? Like, I sense Coco. You're like, how are these people? Like, it's so like. There's a lot of questions, <laughs> and I feel like people have that in general about pro wrestling. The two wrestlers married. What does that look like? Yeah. What, what do, do they, they talk do? about? Do they have dog shark parties? You know. <laughs> I didn't have that question, but I I apparently do after watching that episode. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't wait for everyone to see every episode. And that's the other thing I want to say is that like. Every episode gets better because we got better as like creators and like our editor, Justin Donaldson, our right. And he helps write, shoot everything. He's like done He's so like much. He's a one man the- wrecking crew. He does yeah. all like. Uh, we've all gotten better, it. better and determining like what the best way of doing this is. And like, it's we, just crazy to like watch it evolve. We some improv on episode one 
it took a long time because we ended up with like a 12 minute string out and all of us were like, no, <laughs> it's, it's too long. There's too much time between jokes. It's just rambling and there's no point. Yeah. So, so then we just went fully scripted. Every once in a while, someone comes up with a joke that hits that gets in. But for the most part, let's just fully script this thing. It makes editing easier. It makes yeah. performing and recording and easier. Like, as it evolves and going into the finale, it's like, yeah, I'm just excited for it. I'm so excited to watch this whole series. The episodes so far have been absolutely great. An episode hasn't even aired yet. Yeah, don't, don't, no spoilers. <laughs> don't spoil it. I know. But yeah, no, I mean, you got to watch it. There's new episodes every Wednesday. We've got so much more to talk about. Johnny Loves Taya here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey, it's Will, and we are joined by some extra stars from the, the show. The whole family is here. Uh, we, of course, were joined by Johnny and Taya, but who do we have with us now? This is Presley, the one, the only, the megastar, Presley. Uh, it's Presley. You can follow him on uh, on Twitter. He's, he talks a lot. <laughs> Up and coming star. Bowie, the Bowie. turd ninja. Yeah. A.K.A. Bocifer. Bows Malone, if you want to talk like a 50s cop. <laughs> follow him on <laughs> the boys. They have a joint account. Yes. <laughs> because they pee together. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's great. I love I love talking to people with pets and finding out like what 12 nicknames you have for each animal. I know. Yeah. They like Presley morphed to the pretzel for a while. Pringle, like, oh, you know, yeah. Bose, Bose is Bose usually. Yeah. Bowie, the Bose, the Bosefer. Bose. So I had a question because in one, I think the second episode, uh, you had mentioned Presley always has a birthday every year, but Bowie does not. Is this actually something that happens in real life? Yes, it is. <laughs> it, it's like something that really does bother me sometimes. <laughs> because well, Bowie is daddy's boy and Presley is mama's boy. Well, maybe, you know, it's because I organize it every year and you need to mm-hmm. organize Bowie's party. <laughs> That's why it doesn't happen. Yeah. John's too busy doing flips and shark onesies to plan birthday parties for the other dog. Big shooters in the backyard, guys. Like, Well, Bowie likes dinosaurs. Yeah. So he's going to have a dinosaur demon party. We were really bummed when they switched Luchasaurus to Kill Switch. Because we wanted him to come in. Really screwed Bowie's birthday this year. (laughs) Kill Switch. (laughs) No, see, that's why he should moonlight as Luchasaurus. It should be like uh, on the outside, he should be taking gigs as Luchasaurus and working like children's birthday parties. There's clearly a market for birthday parties. Appearances. I mean, birthday parties he could be doing? Yeah. (laughs) Bringing in cakes for dogs. (laughs) Making bloom animals for kids and stuff. <laughs> well, speaking of which, I wanted to ask about the chore list from episode yes. one. What does that look like in real life for you two? Well, we did say every episode is based on a real story. <laughs> John <laughs> has a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, it's important stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're yes. both, we both have like a massive collection of things that we probably could get rid of, like yes, everybody. And especially as being wrestlers, we have literally costumes everywhere and things everywhere. But yeah, John notoriously has like swords and stunt things and different training apparatuses well, and uh, shoes with string coming out of them. And I'm currently like stunt coordinating a, a horror movie. So there's a whole bunch of stuff for that laying around. I think the thing that made Kira the most mad that I came home with was one of those Wing Chun wooden dummies. <laughs> because <laughs> you just screw up one day and in the living room is this huge wooden dummy. But the thing that made her the most mad was it was the wrong color. <laughs> like, it didn't match. They been, don't come in more than one color. You can't. We have a gym in our house. And then it, we had just moved into the, our house, like, five years ago or whatever it was. And our gym was, like, setting up and coming together. And I, like, really had – it had an aesthetic. It was looking cute. One day I came home, and this wooden dummy was there. And it's totally their own color. It's, like, this reddish brown. Yeah, but – But you were very excited about this thing. So now he has to, like, use it all the time because if not – you have to memorize the 117 original movements that Ip Man did when he was doing Wing Chun. And without the dummy in your house, it's impossible. <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah. fair. I mean, this is we're, we're watching a real marriage here because there's a whole lot of compromise happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, to be fair, Taya did put a big neon slam town sign in the gym. Yeah. I mean, there's still there you yeah, go. Johnny stuff in there. Yeah. <laughs> There's still some Johnny stuff. True, true <laughs> compromise. I love it. Yeah. Uh, my favorite part from episode one was the argument through the storage door. 
it was so perfect <laughs> because it's one of those things you never know when those conversations are actually going to happen in a marriage and you just kind of like they happen when they happen. And it's literally in a storage unit. So was that also a real thing that happened? Well, yeah, no, I haven't locked John in a storage unit overnight in real life. No, we were aware like Justin, Justin, when he wrote the scene too, like it was to be like as serious as possible in this like unserious situation. But she has told me multiple times to get my crap out of the garage. Yeah. <laughs> There's too much stuff. Get it out! I have, I have two favorite parts of that specific episode one, like dead. Yeah. One is when she pushes me. Take one. Ty pushed me so hard that I flew backwards and like landed on a bunch of boxes and slammed the door shut. And two seconds later goes like, oh my God, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, you just shoved me and there's nowhere to go. And two, I feel like we did like 10 minutes of B-roll of me going, hi. Like screaming through the spiders, door. Spiders, there's a spider. spider here. I'm scared. Oh no, I'm that's not a dark. spider. It's something else. It's I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there definitely has to be like a bonus episode at some point where like all the outtakes and all the yeah. There's a lot of uh, outtakes from these two as well. It's a lot of B-roll of these two. Oh yeah, Tots Tots song. Well, so I, well, I did want to ask about the inspiration behind Barricane. Oh <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't need to see this. I mean, apparently, Barricane is like—I mean, I'm surprised someone hasn't started like a, a campaign for us to actually make Barricane at this point. A signed <laughs> petition online, please make Barricane. Yeah, when yeah. I watched episode two, like the final cut of it, I had to completely forgot that we had like we got Barricane back. We got in the bar- mix. Barricade back in the mix. I'm like, oh my god! And then like everyone was like, we have to make Barricane. But if you want to talk about Barricane. I mean, Barricane is very legit. I pitched it to, so I was in Sharknado 5. I'm pretty in with the Asylum guys. <laughs> Sharknado, Barricane. It all I goes mean, together. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, CGI fur at the time was a lot more expensive than CGI sharks. <laughs> and I wanted to get to like suplex and wrestle these bears, yeah. not just like shoot them with guns, because that's been done. So we actually have the whole movie pretty much thought out, you know? Yeah. Taya is like a sexy snowmo- snowmobile instructor from Revelstoke. British which, Columbia. British Columbia is full of bears. I'm kind of, you know, an American, like, badass snowboarder <laughs> with a white palm rain. He just comes to Revelstoke to check out the vibe. <laughs> she hates me because I'm, like, you know, not really getting it. Ignorant. I'm like, oh, she doesn't get America. She's not cool with her Timmy Ho's and her parkades and her, oh, Walshume. But then <laughs> when the barricade hits, people start dying. <laughs> and we're we're forced to get along team up, you know in order to survive to stop this the bears taking over the world and one scene that and we like were... literally the poster we literally got that poster made just for fun funsies to have in our house so that's like that we did like years ago oh yeah we did a photo shoot with like fake guns and bullshit. Fake, fake guns and that was uh pre bowie or bowie would have been in it yeah and Photoshop. We're all weird, the guys. We're just no, it's perfect. Everybody wants to do that stuff. <laughs> so yeah, the American <laughs> poster just lives like on the wall next to the Iron Sheik poster in our TV room. So. Yeah. Speaking of Iron Sheik, let's talk about your Iron Sheik movie that you just made. Well, we wrote it on our honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, which so. was awesome, but I also think was a way for Taya to convince me to watch movies like Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> I like horror the movies, Exorcist guys. And, on your honeymoon, so we're like. Oh, let's just go to the pool and like think of ways to kill our friends. And then let's watch these creepy movies, <laughs> which is like my last choice of something fun. I, I like comedies. Yeah. Well, that's why it became a, you know, this horror comedy. <laughs> it ended up being. But yeah, we were, we've worked on it for years. This whole last year, it was doing the, a film festival run like throughout the States and everything. And it won seven festivals, eight, eight festivals. And then on the Jericho cruise uh, in January, we actually did a screening and it was so cool to, you know, standing room only everyone was watching it. And I was so nervous. I'm like, I hope people, I always, am like, are people going to like it? Are they going to laugh? Are they just going to be like, what is wrong with these two? And uh, everyone like laughed. And then the next day they put it on the new uh, movie channel throughout the ship. So everywhere you went, there was the Iron Sheik massacre. Like I went to the gym and it was on every single treadmill and it was 
wild because it's people, also like there's not like a choice of channels. No, you just you're wa- you are watching the Iron Sheik massacre on a loop. You, you get watch. to watch the safety video, you watch the map, and then you watch Iron Sheik. <laughs> like those are your three yeah, options like I, on the cruise. I like remember walking through the ship and someone's like, "I've seen you killed like seven times today, Tyra." And I was like, <laughs> "Yes." My, my favorite part was when Hacksaw's wife showed us a video of Hacksaw <laughs> put on his bed watching the Iron Sheik massacre. And he starts laughing so hard that he literally falls off the bed. He's just like. (laughs) 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 And you can hear him stump on the ground and he gets back up. He's like, that's so so great. And that's what we want. We want people to just laugh. Like it's meant, it's not meant to be taken seriously. Like, yeah, it was meant to capture the spirit of pro wrestling and Kazra Vaziri, the Iron Sheik and um, that Hacksaw moment is exactly what we were yeah. hoping for. <laughs> so, Ty, I want to ask you, what is your go-to horror franchise? I'm a slasher girl. I feel like everything should be bloody and gross and also comedic and stupid. I'm a campy queen. And we all know that. I just love things that are over the top. Go figure. And so for me, it's always, you know, like I'll always go back to, you know, watching Scream or watching even Gremlins. I consider that to kind of be like. I love Gremlins. I can do Gremlins. Gremlins. Anything do you consider like, Gremlins a Christmas movie? No. No. I mean, it, it kind of like it wavers on the line between, you know, it could be sometimes. If you feel like watching <laughs> it at Christmas, it becomes a Christmas movie. Uh, but yeah, no, I always just like the over the top ridiculousness of everything. And I just remember as a kid, like not being scared of it. And it was always just like the more blood and guts and the creatures and like things coming alive and, and running through someone's house sc- screaming like that's it doesn't freak me out. I think it's funny. And maybe there's something wrong with me. But <laughs> Yeah, cause that gave me nightmares when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's funny. Like, call my friend's parents and be like, why did you let John watch Nightmare on Elm Street? Now he can't go to sleep and he just won't <laughs> say his movie. And then my dad would have to say stuff like, good night, John. He would talk to John's yeah. toys, basically, and like his action figures or his... There's a, a pirate under the bed. Like, he'd just make crap like that up. And then he would wait outside my room sometimes and scare me if I tried to leave. What? <laughs> John's, ter- John's terrorized. Yeah. I mean, this also kind of explains so much. So. <laughs> you know, whereas really I was like, one. yeah, like, should we feed them after midnight? Like gremlins. Like, I- <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> this is so great. And uh, we're going to have so much more to talk about. Johnny loves Taya. And we're talking with Johnny TV and Taya Valkyrie right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted, it's Aubrey, it's Will, and we're joined by Johnny and Taya, the stars of the new AEW series, Johnny Loves Taya. My son is 10 years old. He has been taking parkour classes for the last, like, two years. He's recently just upgraded to this new Ninja Warrior class that he's going to start on Saturday. But he's not quite ready to do anything like real world. Mostly because that scares the crap out of me. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, ah! I'll say a couple things about that. Go, uh, go. So, yeah, I, I wanted to ask your opinion as you are well known as a lover of movement. Parkour is a part of your existence. It's a part of who you are. It's a part of your wrestling identity. Uh, so, yeah, I have all of the questions to ask, but I want to start with your opinion. How do I, as a father, break the sense of fear that I have for him trying anything. If you want to get him to stop doing parkour, you should start doing the classes with him. One. (laughs) (laughs) Two, there's a distinction between parkour and free running. Parkour is specifically getting from point A to point B in the most efficient, fast route possible. And so that's your, your running, sprinting, vaulting, climbing. Free running is almost the half pipe skateboarders doing tricks that are kind of unnecessary, but flashy and really cool. (laughs) Personally, I don't do any of that stuff outside and wrestlers don't have to land on their feet that much. I've seen so many videos of parkour slash free runners doing stuff outside. And if you land on an unstable surface or concrete or something slippery, I mean, when we saw like spider, like, break both bones in his leg because he he did a double rudy over a fence and landed on one leg and it just snapped so what are you saying keep him in the foam pit 
Like, to, yeah. like there's, there's no need to do anything outside without pads to prove yourself by like doing a, like a roof gap because you can do the same distance and the same everything at the gym. The difference is if you fall at the gym, you're falling into a foam pit versus your death. <laughs> versus your death. <laughs> As yeah. a dad, I would just say, keep him in the gym and he'll be okay. Tell, tell him this one too. Like uh, Dom Tomato, like a famous parkour guy. Like he set the record for the longest, highest stair jump. He cleared something like 45 stairs and went down maybe 25 feet. Perfect technique. He lands it, he hits, he rolls, but it's concrete. So even with the perfect technique, he still fractured his left foot. And it's amazing, but there's a limit to like human body versus concrete. There's a limit to how much the human body can take. And that's pushing it. People just have to figure that out for themselves. What so, are you going to tell Will how to how to relax? About it? it sounds like the answer is don't relax. Just stick with it at the gym. And I am perfectly okay with this. Yeah. like I, For me, like, I mean, when I was in eighth grade, what calmed me down the most was um, I had an eight foot quarter pipe in my driveway. I don't know how I convinced my parents to do that. <laughs> but <laughs> pro skaters started showing up and then someone got hurt. And we took it down. And then like, I built this huge bike ramp kind of behind the house so they couldn't find it. And then one day I decided, like, I'm going to bomb the hill, hit the ramp. Someone's going to throw a rope. I'm going to grab the rope and swing way out. And then so This is my out. life, everybody. This is, and uh, so I, I yeah. did everything except when I grabbed the rope, I slipped. So I just kind of went, ooh, like, way out there. And when I landed, I, like, looked down at my arm, which had a double compound fracture. <laughs> I could see both bones just sticking out of my arm and that's don't be like john everybody well no but it, that's what it took for me to be like maybe i shouldn't do this this sucks i'm gonna have a cast for six months and i'm sitting on the couch <laughs> thank, thank god i haven't started high school yet yeah but personally it took something like that for me to be like chill out dude <laughs> like you're gonna start high school rest and there's yeah. girls and there's a whole bunch of other stuff they don't want to hear about how your arm's broken and you can't go to the dance because you fell on your bike, you know? There you go. So, Will, the answer to your question is have your son listen to this episode of the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's what we're what we're doing. All right. <laughs> so we talked about, like, starting the show. You guys have been working on it for a long time. But how does the pitch between we have this idea for a show, we're going to put together the show, it's going to be a scripted version of real life things that have happened. How does the conversation from that go to, we're going to put this up on AEW's YouTube channel. What was that whole thing like? And what was the decision to release it on Valentine's Day? Like, where did that come from? Originally, when we came up with like the Johnny Loves Taya concept, it was more of like a way to do pre-tapes uh, rather than be like a show show. Um, because I wanted us to have like these kind of character building pre-tapes that lived in this kind of imaginary reality show world. And so it was going to be kind of like, for example, I'm at home, I find out I have a match. And so I like basically cut a promo while I'm doing something normal at home kind of thing. But that evolved into like an actual show. I don't even like know exactly like when it switched to being like into like, a show. But then like we discussed it with Sanjay, with Mike Mansuri, with you, Will, with Jimmy Jacobs mm -hmm. and stuff. And then, you know, Tony Khan and everyone. And like once we got the green light for making it into a show and it existing on the YouTube, like that was exciting because we look at people like RJ who have their own show on there. And Who's also been just helpful as well. Yeah. And RJ's been a great help. We just want to create stuff and create moments and create stories for everybody. And this was a way for us to do it in our own way and with the full support and the backing of, you know, of Tony, of all the, all the producers of Mike Mansuri, of everybody and AEW. And so when we were trying to figure out when to release it, we weren't sure if it was going to be like January or February or what. And literally Mansuri is like, I think we should release it on Valentine's day. And that's literally just what happened. And we released it on Valentine's day. Cause we weren't even sure like what day of the week we were going to put it on or like what was going to happen. Um, but all these things just kind of came together and there's no real like, direct line of like that we went down it kind of just happened this way and so we were just like when it came down and we we're like okay it's happening february 14th crunch time like we gotta get this all done and you know me being like 
lining up all the ducks in a row. Uh, we just had to line up the ducks in a row. And, you know, every week we're still working with making sure that all the post-production and that everything gets sent into the studios. And we're learning so much about what that means and producing this kind of as well. So it's been a really cool experience that way because, uh, you know, it's a constant Thing. Like when we, we, we when just we leave, delivered episode three, yeah, delivered a uh, different episodes every single week. We have to make sure that the thumbnail, the description, the synopsis, like everything is perfectly perfect. Um, and do I think sometimes when things go out and I'm like, oh, I could have done that better a hundred percent, but like that's kind of part of it. And like, it's I the hope- same thing you think after a wrestling match. <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm like, it was good, but oh, I wish I'd done these three things a little better or different. Yeah. So it's been, I'm, I hope that you know, like I said, that people can see like how we've improved and how things go as the season progresses. But uh, yeah, I'm just really thankful that AEW, that Tony, that everybody like believed in this crazy little vision that we had and are allowing us to be creators and make this for the AEW fans, create this content for the company and also just let us kind of like expand ourselves as characters and show a different that, side of that us. That I think is important to note because like, yeah. It's a scripted show, but it's scripted in the way that, like, Curb Your Enthusiasm or a lot of those type of shows are scripted. It's like Modern playing, Family, like, I Love bizarro Lucy. extensions of ourselves. Yeah. It's it's not like one day, like, <laughs> I find out Kira's a robot. From outer Who's space. Kira? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, John has, like, 12 names, so it's it's like... Yeah, that's true. It's wrestling in general. I think I have hundreds. Like Hundreds you, of names. If you think of like all the small promotions, mm-hmm. Below Zero, Ultra, Johnny. Black, there's so many names. Yeah, You got to be Johnny Valkyrie recently too, mm-hmm. which I know Taya was very happy about. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, what do you guys think TV stands for? There you go. I loved it. Like as soon as it's like, oh, that, Mrs. That, TV. Is Will's brain just explode? Yeah. <laughs> that just, no, that just blew my mind. Mainly because, I, you know, obviously the original introduction of Johnny Tied to QTV and everything. I had hadn't even. What do you think TV stands for, everybody? Surprise! Hey, that's really great. I actually had what my in-laws over just yesterday, and uh, they were really big Lucha Underground fan. Uh, you know, they were talking about Johnny Mundo, and hey. uh, we were just having that conversation literally 24 hours ago. So, surprise! Awesome. <laughs> uh, I did want to talk about uh, Ring of Honor and yes. uh, how that's been going for you guys as of late. I think that's really been giving. You guys, as we talked about in the beginning, the ability to uh, really showcase yourselves as an on-screen professional wrestling couple. And, uh, you know, throughout the women's TV title tournament, Johnny, you've been in Ty's corner. Uh, and so, yeah, um, how has that been going for you guys? And how have you been feeling like Ring of Honor has given you a, a platform to to showcase who you are as a couple? Well, I think I mean- we should first off start by saying we, we sincerely apologize to all the lactose intolerant people out there who've just been lactose and cheese shamed by Dalton Castle this entire time. <laughs> you know, he was just eating, like rubbing it in, you know, just, oh, you can't have any lactose? Oh, I'm just eating that cheese. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, I think what it is like that I've enjoyed the most is being able to wrestle consistently all the time because I am a pro wrestler and a performer and I like to work. I like to be wrestling. I like being in the ring. I like doing the backstage segments. I like doing, you know, having a day crammed with different things to do. And I feel like we've really had that opportunity to showcase our hardworking badassery that is Johnny and Taya and uh, remind people of who we are. And I think that that's really fun. And, you know, being able to wrestle every week, being able to be in each other's corner, like you said, supporting each other, getting matching for coats, matching sunglasses, you know? Oh my God. It's great. <laughs> there's, there's nothing worse than a day of TV where you're not really doing anything. For me, if it, if I'm sitting there all day doing nothing. He's putting, you know, trying to put I'm more holes in his shoes and like, writing weird shit. Weird <laughs> notes for movies that probably will never happen. <laughs> Yeah, thinking so of different moves like rigs, stunts, like all kinds of weird so it's, stuff. It's good to keep John busy. Yeah. yeah, my my favorite thing about working with both of you is 
independently and together. This is the case. But both of you take wrestling so seriously in the fact that you approach your craft with seriousness. You put together great matches. You think about story. But at the same time, both of your characters come through. Like there was one recently I was refing a Taya match and John was on the outside. And I'm just dying at his like commentary where he's like pumping up Taya, but also yelling at me. And like those are the ones that I find the most fun where it's it, I'm reminded that wrestling is just silly. <laughs> Even when it is at its most seriousness. This is my ballet era. Yeah, he's in his ballet. <laughs> I love it. His ballet era. Why did this happen? I wanted to be in my hot girl ballet era, but now it's John and his hot girl ballet. John era. is in the hot girl ballet <laughs> era. I love it. Oh, yeah. No, but it's been fun because, yeah, like as serious as we take this and as serious as, you know, making sure that this product, this show is what is best for the fans and for the company and everything at the root of it all. It's pro wrestling and it's meant to be fun and it's a story. And, you know, I think we do a good job of like putting that all together and well, presenting it that I way. I think a lot of people make this mistake. You have to take pro wrestling ser seriously and the matches seriously, but you don't necessarily have to take yourself that seriously. Because you aren't you out there. You're a character. You're working everything 100%. We're pouring everything into. But, like, I'm just John. Like, I don't really care what people think of me because when I'm out there, I'm not me. You're a dude that puts holes in his shoes and gets dragged out of a hallway. That has sparkly two-piece outfits to match his wife's gear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hot girl it's real shit. commitment. Yeah. <laughs> Hot girl valet era for both of you. Well, this <laughs> this conversation was awesome. I'm so glad we got to talk more about your show. If you haven't watched it yet, please do go to AEW YouTube channel. Uh, Johnny Loves Taya episodes every Wednesday. It's been a fantastic show so far. Great little peek into the life of Johnny TV and Taya Valkyrie. You can follow Taya on Instagram and X, whatever you call it now, the Ty Valkyrie. You can follow Johnny on Twitter, The Real Morrison, and on Instagram, John Hennigan. You can follow this podcast, AEW Unrestricted, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. You can watch Dynamite Wednesdays, ROH Thursdays, Rampage Fridays, Collision on Saturdays. Watch all of the shows. Watch all of our awesome people. Yeah. Uh, definitely check out Presley and Bowie. They're amazing. <laughs> I am Aubrey Edwards. All them on Instagram. At the P-Boys. boys At the P-Boys. <laughs> the there you go. Make sure that's the most Insta important Instagram to follow. If you're going to get anything out of this podcast, follow that one. I am Aubrey Edwards with Will Washington. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We going to turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pumping. Make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing in the freaks are coming out.